Hi, uh, this is a little review of how to uh, use the Spectrum Analyzer on the Enritsu S412e. Again, I'm remotely controlling this from my computer. I ran the uh, fmdmod.stp file, setup file, and set my frequency, in this case, to the AAR channel 007. So I'm centered at 160.215. Uh, what I've got on the screen is a RF synthesizer connected via cable through my MA2520A high power input protection module into the RF in of the S412E. And this is an un unmodulated carrier, uh, but it's a uh, nice constant carrier to be able to uh, demonstrate with. So uh, with this, again, you can set your uh, whatever channel you need for AAR channels 005 through 097. Going to amplitude. I would set everything uh, initially to auto. So auto reference level that means it's going to move that reference up and down depending on the uh, strength of the carrier. It'll do that for you automatically. You can also do it manually if you'd prefer to do that. Set auto attenuation to on. Uh, typically leave preamp off unless you're going to do an off-air measurement. Under span, that's been preset. So we have a span of 30 kilohertz, uh, which typically is you know about what you, what we'd like if we're going to just look at a single AAR channel. Bandwidth, initially I would I would set auto uh, resolution bandwidth, set that to on, audio video bandwidth to on. And uh, that will take care of getting the kind of the best uh, setup for you on the screen. Markers, again, we've got uh, up to six markers. I can go to marker one, press peak search, and that will center me on the 160.214.836. And um, under more, I can also add a uh, marker table. So you can play around with all that as well. The other thing you have are trace functions. So I can press shift trace, which is the five key trace A is just a live trace. It's this yellow trace. It's set to view, set to write, trace A operations normal. And that just makes it a live trace. Trace B, I'm going to typically set trace B to be a max hold. So when I go ahead and right now I have that uh, blanked out, turn it back on to view it, and that's the green trace. So any time the RSSI sweep makes a new maximum, it will show that in green. So I've got a portable uh, sitting next to the S412e. When I key it up, it's going to be on AAR308, which is the um, NXDN frequency in between 007 and 008. And when I release push to talk, I still have the outline of uh, 308. And you can see this uh, spectrum analyzer has really good 
uh, characteristics in that this is a pretty close, very close signal to, to my uh, signal generator and everything is clearly displayed. I can easily see what's going on. And a lot of times, you know, if you're looking at some interference issue um, affecting your, let's say, 007 or 008, you want to be able to see what's popping up right next to it. You need that detail between the signals, and a lot of spectrum analyzers simply can't provide that. So I'm going to go ahead and press Reset Trace, and that removed the previous max hold. And I'm going to again uh, set that to blank and uh, remove that green trace from the screen completely. But again, that's under Shift Trace. So I'm back on bandwidth settings, resolution bandwidth. Um, there's a couple of things to keep in mind uh, that may require the need to take it off of auto resolution bandwidth. So when I have it on, I've got a 300 hertz resolution bandwidth is what the S412E selected. And I can very nicely see that uh, carrier next to it on 308. However, it's fairly slow to sweep. So if you're looking or trying to look for a, uh, a pulsed signal, something like an EOT, for example, you may have to increase the sweep speed. So I'm going to increase my resolution bandwidth up to three kilohertz. Now, it's the uh, my link between the computer and the S412E is not quite keeping up with how fast this is actually sweeping. It's actually um, quite a bit faster. So this would be able to pick up a more of a pulsed signal, something that is on for 100 milliseconds off, on, off. Um, and if you need to see that, uh, you have to make sure you're sweeping fast enough to catch it. But what changes, if I now go ahead and key up my little, my portable on 308, you see I get um, kind of a, more of a blob. I don't see the two individual signals um, because I'm sweeping so fast, there isn't time for the filtering to really get really identify or, or uh, capture both signals. But like I said, sometimes you may need to do that just to um, be able to catch that pulse signal. And I can keep going down. Now the other thing, as I go down, so my auto resolution band with 300 hertz, I drop that down to 100, and you can watch my noise floor is starting to drop. So if I need to find a signal that is really deep down in the noise, I'm going to have to drop my resolution bandwidth. I would also, if it was off air, I would turn on my preamp. Um, but now I'm sweeping much slower, and I may very well miss a, a pulsed signal from, say, uh, a uh, EOT or some of the other uh, data products in use by the railroads. And last, under amplitude, here's my uh, preamp setting. I can turn that on. I'm going to have to make sure um, that my reference level is properly adjusted. Um, Auto ref should do that, or you may need to manually adjust it to use the preamp. The other thing you're going to have to be careful of is uh, some nearby signal that's really going to swamp the front end of the uh, S412E or any other spectrum analyzer. And typically that's going to be either a TV station or a radio station. 
if you are really close by either one of those two you may have to add some sort of pre-selector etc to the front end um, and filter everything else out but the AAR band or whatever band you're working with and that's it for the spectrum analyzer okay the last part of this is um, another really good use for the spectrum analyzer trying to find intermod issues so I've changed my span to 100 kilohertz so I can see a little bit more of the spectrum and I've actually set up four markers kind of preset all this ahead of time um, shift trace I've got trace a live trace B is um, blank at the moment but it is uh, set again for max hold so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on I've got two portable radios one set on AAR 007 one on 008 so I'm having a bit of a problem um, when I'm keying up the two radios it's causing the link between the S412E and my computer to lock up so this is uh, 007 keyed it up no problem 008 keyed it up no problem but here's what happens when I key them both up at the same time so I again had the uh, problem where I lost the link but thanks to max hold you can see when I keyed up both 007 008 it actually creates a third order intermod third order harmonics and um, that are not there when I key up either one or the other combination of the two produces these third order products at these levels so they may not bother your site or what's going on but if they're strong enough uh, they may break squelch and cause really cause some havoc at a let's say at a shared site for base stations etc so this is a great way to kind of troubleshoot that you can key one of the base station radios key the other key them both and see what happens see what gets produced